Hello there everybody, welcome back to my channel, my name is Joseph, and welcome to another Should You Pull video for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia. Now today's video we're going to be discussing what I hope is the last one where we're not entirely sure what to expect from these banners, what's going on with them, what events coming with them, or anything like that. But today we're going to be discussing what we presume to come along with the Equinox banner on Monday, which will be Vaan, Arden, and Kefka's return. Now, obviously, as with a lot of these banners recently, like Setsa and Shantotto and Friends and all of that, this is very subject to change, because there's a lot of stuff going around with Dissidia that is a bit mixed up and is honestly making life hell for me as a content creator. But I figured it would be a good idea to take a look at Vaan and his rework, which is is something for sure as well as Arden and Kefka and what they get with their LD boards. Now obviously we don't have an event to go off just yet and we need to wait for the community stream on Monday as well for any information that's going to come out regarding things like Setsa, Yuna, etc and where things are going to get placed so we'll have to wait and see on that front. But if you'd like to know more about those three characters then stay tuned and keep on watching. As always, don't forget to check all of my social media links in the description box below. Over on Twitch, as always, I stream five days a week, including Final Fantasy XIV, uh, obviously the City of Final Fantasy Opromnia, and I've just restarted my uh, FF Count-Up series as well, because I'm now going through Forge of Fiesta on FF5, which I'll be going through pretty quickly, because I don't have a lot of time left before the end of August, so definitely keep an eye out on Twitch for that in particular. And then over on Patreon, I always shout out one of my patrons for every time I release a video so that I can give thanks to each person in individually and get put a spotlight on those that decide to support the channel further and today that person is going to be Shazzy V9 who is one of my patrons a while back and then Lula has come back recently so a massive thank you goes up to you because you've been a supporter of mine for a very long time and I really do appreciate it and your go title card has Kane on it who honestly I'm surprised I don't see more of Kane when it comes to these title cards so a massive thank you goes out to you and obviously uh, if you are interested in getting a title card just like Shazzy has a as well as all sorts of other benefits, such as being a part of Would You Pull, being a part of Voice Chats, we'll do all sorts of other things, then click on the link in the description box below. And lastly but not least, do not forget to check out all the other wonderful creators out there for Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia, and of course all the other resources out there pertaining to the game, including those I use in these very videos. So first things first, let's take a look at the banner as a whole and what it's going to have to offer for each of the characters that are featured on it. Now again, this is going off of the JP version of the game and this is subject to change with the way things have been going with Dissidia recently, but I imagine that the banner will contain Vaan, Kefka and Arden with their full kit, so it's another triple BT banner. So honestly, if you have none of these, then the value is already there for you and you don't really need me to be explaining these things. But let's take a look at each character individually. Now Arden, Arden's actually a really cool character. I really enjoy Arden. I don't have his BT, trust me, I tried the first time around. But, and if I were to get it, I'd be pretty happy about it. But I think when you stand him next to the likes of Vaan when we get to him, Tidus, Tifa, etc. Certainly at this point, without the, uh, the extension on his LD, he's just a little bit lackluster. Now, with his LD board, he does get some nice extras, but nothing that fundamentally changes his kit. Now, if you want to know more about Arden, obviously you can go back and watch the video that I released the first time around. Just bear in mind that that video was released a while ago, and obviously his potential has changed since then. Now, Dark Tornado is now a double HP dump, which we could have done with in the first time around, but it's fine that we get it now. And Arden does at least have the decency to have his follow-up attack comes up, coming off of a lot of his stuff, which means that he's able to get extra HP dumps, which realistically is what you're looking for at this point in time. He also gives himself two charges of his Spectral Charge, or his Hat Buff, which means that you can start with Dark Tornado and instantly have five stacks of Spectral Charge, because he starts with three thanks to his EX+, Plus. but before now, you'd have to break with his Warp Strike, and it was actually kind of awkward to build up to five stacks, which would make a big difference to his kit, especially his EX, so therefore you wanted to get to that as quickly as you could. Well, now all you have to do is just use his LD and he'll get there. And you also get Overkill, which is his zombie buff, if you will, that me means he goes to zero HP but can't die. And he gets that for a little bit longer, up to, so he gets 10 turns of it. And he gets a free skill use the following turn, which is also quite nice because he did run out of skills fairly frequently because his HP plus wasn't particularly good. 
And you also get HP and bravery damage dealt up by a 20% and any buffs that he puts on himself are extended by, uh, by one action, which is always very handy because it means that the rest of his buffs that he gets are going to be longer lasting and therefore he'll just generally last longer. This is fine, like it, it definitely brings Arden up to a better point, but like I said, he isn't a character that you think of first when it comes to heavy damage dealers, because he is his primary function is to be a damage dealer. Although his survivability with his overkill buff does give him a unique niche, especially alongside the likes of Galoof, Gladio, other characters that are very hard to kill, you can kind of build around that, and this does bring him up to a point where you're able to do that again. However, the problem with Arden is that his future isn't particularly bright from what we've seen over on the JP side where his BT plus is fairly underwhelming comparatively to other characters. And because there are other damage dealers like Tidus, like Tifa, like Vaan, that will just churn out way more damage than him, he is great to have access to if you fancy it, but he's certainly not mandatory by any means. Now, of course, he also gets access to an LD Call ability this time around, and the LD Call ability is pretty meh, honestly. Like, it gives you the typical kind of offensive buffs, so the Caller will get Max Brave, Attack, Brave Damage, HP Damage dealt up. It's fine, it's nice, I guess, but there's no real nuance to what his LD Call brings along. It's just offensive buffs and a double HP dumping LD attack. So, realistically, he's... He's just not really the kind of character you want to be chasing after unless you really love Arden. Now moving on to Kefka. Now Kefka's LD board is actually kind of odd in a certain way, but it definitely does make him better. The issue that Kefka has always had up until this point is the fact that all of his attacks are single HP dumps, except for his LD attack now, which is a little bit of a shame, which means his damage is just not going to be up to scratch with a lot of damage dealer or, you know, offensive debuffers even, like Tidus, at this point in time. But he does have a lot of uniqueness to him by basically clogging your enemy's debuff slots as hard as possible so that they can't buff over them. And he also obviously has the blind and HP silence that a lot of characters don't have. And his damage and his burst effects are really nice in that once you've got that, you have extra damage to your uh, HP damage to your party based on the number of debuffs that the enemies have. So that's actually all really nice. And Kefka, I would say, was more of a priority than Arden because Arden's BT is nice, but it all it really amounts to is a bit more damage for Arden and it doesn't bring a huge amount to the party. It's fine. It does augment the party, but not to the same level as Kefka does. Or, well, Varn's actually doesn't augment it that much, but it, it does just in a bit. <laughs> we'll get to Varn. <laughs> but, um, you know, Kefka's LD board does do like a weird thing first things for first because it inflicts the debuff from his light of judgment uh, attack on the enemy before hyperdrive goes off. So the big thing with hyperdrive is that it inframes all of Kefka's debuffs. This can actually be a bad thing in certain situations because one of the things with Kefka is balancing what debuffs you have on the enemy so that you don't overclog them. So because it means that Kefka just does not play well with any other debuffer. Obviously with eight debuff slots now, it's not quite as bad because Kefka has six debuff slots. So attack down, defense down, speed down, blind, HP silence, and his, uh, and his EX debuff as well. Which, you know, it means that there's a couple of slots available, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but it does mean that you have to be careful of balancing those debuffs with other characters. Particularly considering now using Hyperdrive is guaranteed to put at least four frame debuffs, and the two that you want, which are the blind and HP silence, aren't attached to Hyperdrive. So realistically, you're gonna get six, whether you like it or not. It does deal a lot of HP damage because it has full HP damage and a double HP dump as well. And then you get a free skill use on the following turn, which is always useful. And he also gets a new buff from this, which actually kind of replicates his BT effect, but gives it to him. This is something that you'll see a lot across all three of these. A lot of their, B their, L their new LD buffs will replicate their BT effect, but kind of just for them. So Dancing Mad makes it so that he gets Brave Regen, a lot more Brave Overflow, 
Brave damage uh, by 20% and HP damage by 5% for every debuff on the enemy. So this is a thing because it like he has splash damage on a lot of his attacks. So at least in AOE fights, he is going to be dealing a decent amount of damage. And now that he's got at least one attack with double HP dumps on it, you can actually churn out a decent amount of damage with him. I think that realistically, Kefka is there to provide safety. Like he's not there for damage. He's not there for any other reason than to provide safety. And he just happens to have a decent amount of damage to go along with it. And his, his BT adds to this by increasing obviously the HP damage limit, increasing you know, the amount of damage that the party deals like through the debuffs as well. So it all is becomes additive and it does turn out that Kefka can deal a decent amount of damage. Just be cautious of brave leakage because he only has single HP dumps on the majority of his moves, except for his EX and his LD. You just have to be cautious where you're putting it. Chaos Wing will still deal a decent amount of damage. Putting the Sneering Clown debuff on, it's still good. And the debuffs that Kefka provides are very powerful. Like, even without the HP silence, Sneering Clown and these framed debuffs is like 70% on, on, like, on attack and defense. And then six, I think it's 50 or 60% on speed as well. They do add up. And if we've used Tidus, if you've used Tidus a lot, you can actually like see that kind of damage potential from Kefka. But obviously, Tidus has a lot more in terms of damage output than Kefka does. But I still think Kefka has like a place. But again, like Arden, he's definitely not the star of the show in this particular banner. Okay, so now let's talk about Vaan. Vaan, when he came out, was a little bit sad. Like he was fine, but he got power crept very, very quickly. However, I still BT tokened his burst, which makes me very nervous. If I get a free BT and it turns out to be Vaan, that's going to make me feel a certain type of way, considering that I I used BT tokens on Vaan because I had to use BT tokens uh, because they were going to run out of my mailbox at the time. So hopefully this pays off okay. But the rework we'll talk about in a second. We're actually going to start by talking about the LD board and then come to the rework afterwards, which is a bit of an odd order, but it will make sense. So Vaan's LD board, first things first, gives him another use of his LD, which gives him free skill uses for his next three turns which is fantastic, really, really good. Like it, it basically makes it so that he's just churning out damage and damage is definitely Vaan's thing at this point. So the mist, uh, so the mist is the uh, the buff that gives him those free skills, and it also makes it so that you get more from it, uh, which again replicates his BT buff, where his bravery cannot go under twenty percent of his own bravery. Now this is very relevant because Vaan does a lot of HP attacks, like a lot. Um, as you can see, Earth and Eruption is a two-hit AOE brave HP attack that goes off six times and it also gives him his flight of freedom buff that he would normally get from his other skills and you know you, that which also gives him hp damage up now max brave up now he gets attack and max brave overflow from his buffs combined he basically gets a lot of offensive buffs now Vaan is probably the first character i can think of at least outside of tifa who blessed the light she was only really doing it well actually you know tifa probably was the first character but Vaan definitely kind of drives it home you know, I was, you know, we've all been complaining about the number crunch and not being able to see numbers on the screen and things like that. Yeah, Vaan, Vaan is a very guilty party for this. And you can see this from just his LD attack. It's a two hit brave HP attack that goes off six times and his bravery can't go under 20%. So he's going to be dealing a lot of damage with this move. So let's now look at his rework that goes with it. So white whirl extension. So instead of getting the plus version of his attacks after the fifth use, which was the like the thing with him before was that it, once you got to like the last couple of his skill uses or after you'd used his LD a couple of times, you'd get the plus versions of his skills, which hit harder, dealt a bit like, you know, they just hit harder and they did more stuff with the follow up attacks that came after them. Now Vaan's been in the game for a very long time and gone through a lot. Like he was one of the best characters of the game at the very, very start of this game, like the very start, and he kind of has peaks and troughs. This is his highest peak by far, because what happens now is that, so White Whirl 
and Luminescence are uh, now multi-hitting HP dumps. So even the first one is a four hit brave HP attack that hits twice. And then this Luminescence is a holy brave HP attack that hits twice. Now, one thing I did want to point out as well when it comes to his LD is that with the boards is that whenever he's using any of his abilities, he lowers all enemies all elemental in peril for the duration of his attack. So it's not actually a debuff, it is something that happens from his attacks. And this is relevant because all of his attacks actually have different elements. So you have ice, you have wind, you have holy, He can't, and fire from his EX as well. His EX is still a bit rubbish, but it's okay, because the rest of his stuff more than makes up for it. So now, after you've gotten White World Plus and Luminescence, so you're then getting the, you know, the good versions of his skills. Now, White Whirl Plus is a 4-hit Brave HP attack that hits twice, and Luminescence is a 5-hit Brave HP attack that hits three times, both of which have splash damage on them. And of course, let's not forget, forget that Luminescence has Blind attached to it. So that's a nice little extra, you know, just, just casual Blind on there as well. So we're now talking um, 5 HP dumps, and that's not his strongest move. <laughs> um, which is a thing, Red Spiral now becomes a three hit Brave HP attack, followed by a three uh, a three Brave HP dump attack like twice. So this is, this is Tifa levels of damage on every single skill he has. And he's getting these skills for free because of his LD buff. Now, there's a lot of damage here, but there is one thing that Vaan has that Tifa doesn't which is a burst. Now, Varn's burst phase is spectacular to behold if you like big numbers. If you're like me and you're not so keen on the like swarms of numbers on the screens, you're gonna feel that, but quite honestly, that is the direction the game is going and we're all just gonna have to make our peace with it and enjoy the ride because there are a lot of numbers that come off from Varn's burst. Like, basically, his damage, like the effect of his burst is kind of irrelevant, to be honest, because you're getting six of these moves. Bear in mind that Mist makes his next three moves free, so he can spam his red spiral, his six HP dumping attack, repeatedly, and be able to just go off over and over and over again. Like I said, the damage you will get out of this, bear in mind that you have splash damage, on his skill, on his skill too, his white well. You also get um, with red spiral and white out brave refund after each after each HP attack. We are talking twenty seven hits of bravery, six HP dumps. This is like meteor crusher on a regular skill. It's quite terrifying. And then obviously Flight of Freedom comes off of all of his skills, which gives him more attack, more brave regen. He gets attack, uh, like he gets uh, obviously the HP damage up from his LD board, etc. It's a lot. It's it's a lot. And if you already have Vance BT, you're going to appreciate it. So I, a lot of people say to me, oh, but Lufetia Plus is coming soon. You know, Burst Plus is coming soon. Vaan's not gonna last. Well, I would like to turn your attention to YouTube for a moment, because as you can see here, Vaan is used quite a lot in Lufetia Plus. And it was quite a simple search for me to find that. Quistis's event, uh, the, new, the Shinryu event, uh, Snow's uh, LD board event a Divine Ifrit, you know, there's a uh, Guy's Lost Chapter, there are a lot of events that Vaan can be used in going forwards, and a lot of people have made very good use of him because his combination of Imperil, HP Bravery Regen, the uh, uh, Bravery Regen based on HP damage he dealt, I'll say that again, you know, the fact that he refunds Bravery constantly, the fact that he can't be broken because he can't go under 20% bravery while either his BT or his LD effect is up. It's a lot of damage and it's like, yes, I know that damage dealers are fairly simplistic, but he's got like one of Kefka's main draws just built into one of his moves that happens to be and like his AoE damaging attack. So you can spread that out as and when you see fit. So the fact that you're getting just this colossal amount of damage, certainly on a single target by spamming Red Spiral, it's very hard to ignore. Like, it, you know, Vaan is probably the best character out of all of them in terms of his damage potential from the ones that have come out 
in triple BT banners. So obviously Squall had his day in the sun, Sephiroth had his day in the sun, although I still maintain that Warrior of Light was the prize of that banner. <laughs> and then obviously with Shantotto, Terra and Noctis, Shantotto got a really good rework, but it ain't nothing on this. Like if you go for any one character that you want to carry you for a while, Vaughn is damage, he's clean, simple, has a BT, that means he's doing damage, clean, simple, and a lot of it. Now I didn't mention uh, Kefka's LD call, which he gets, which obviously, like, it's it's nice for him to have, but the problem I have with Kefka is that his base call is Light of Judgment and not Trine. Like, it's really upsetting, like, to, to have the HP Silas attack would be amazing. And Light of Judgment is, is okay, like, it does the job in terms of inflicting the debuffs. And the nice thing with Kefka as well is because of his EX+, he inflicts the Sneering Clown debuff on entry, so he does get that, which means that you get more damage out of it in general the speed goes down they get the sap they get you get good stuff from that and then hyperdrive does a call ability that gives you brave damage 20 percent brave overflow 20 percent and you get brave regen as well it's nice i think there are better debuffers out there for call abilities i certainly don't think it's bad i think it's actually pretty good but honestly i think i prefer the likes of tedus or you know a more meaningful debuff like faris is quite nice where, you know, you could argue that Kefka could be a replacement for Faris because his debuffs are quite strong, but I don't think that, like, it's just doesn't do as much all at once as the likes of Faris does. And then Varn's LD call is Earthen Eruption, which is just a hard hitting move that gives you HP damage dealt up, max brave up, and brave overflow up. It's uh, if you're taking Barn, you're taking him in your main party. You're not taking him as a call ability. In terms of high armor, Ardin has attack keystone and increases own brave HP damage limits by uh, by uh, by twenty percent by twenty percent each, and they're fine. I think that like if you really like Ardin, then you could go for it. But Ardin's potencies are still fairly low, and Ardin's not a character you're going to be taking into Lufenia Plus because of this, because the damage reductions are so heavy. Kefka, on the other hand, I'm not mad at his HA+. Plus. Like, I quite like, I mean, his HA for, like, Tactics Keystone, lowering all stats even further, is really good for him, because if you're taking him, lowering stats and the utility of that is why you're taking him. But... Considering that he has the brave HP, the brave damage up on debuffs, the HP H uh, damage up on debuffs, there's a good chance that he will cap out on his bravery quite frequently. So if you can take advantage of that as best possible, then there's an argument to be had for HA+, but I think because the ingots, etc. are still quite rare, like it, I, I probably wouldn't put them on Kefka straight away, purely because if I'm going to take Kefka, I would probably take a more dedicated damage dealer alongside him, who I'd rather have the HA+. Varn is going to want his. I, I would put a lot into Varn. I think that Varn's damage is going to cap out pretty frequently with the Imperil and the amount of damage that he can churn out. It's quite... If you put the right support character next to him, certainly going into Lufenia Plus, you're going to want support characters that go with him. Setsa, for example, when we finally get him. Or Yuna, for example, when we get her. Setsa and Vaan is terrifying. Like I said, 27 hit age brave HPs. 27. They're going to go off from the fixed dice moves. Like, let's let's be real here. You can use Varn and Setsa together and just churn out damage with those two alone. Like, it's crazy. And the utility's there as well, because you have Blind from Varn and Freeze from Setsa. It's a lot. Batteries there from Setsa. You, and then your third character is whoever. Like, <laughs> like at that point, it doesn't even matter. So, like, you just you can take those two and just clean house for all you want, because you'll get rainbow numbers for days. Core and Varn, you know, that's a nice combination too. Core during Varn's BT phase, make that damage even higher. You know, there's a lot that can be said for that. You, you know, and I would want as much damage out of each of Varn's hits as possible, considering how frequently he HP dumps. So I think there is a lot of argument to be had for his HA+. So once again, here we are asking the question, should you pull on this banner? Now, I honestly think this comes down to the same as most of the Triple BT banners, in that the less you have on it, the more valuable it is. However, I do think that with this particular banner, Varn is a clear standout from the rest of the pack, from any other BT banners as well. Like, Sephiroth was a big deal, so was Warrior of Light, but Varn is 
on another level in terms of damage for this point in the game and does last quite a way into the future, you know, if you really want him to. Obviously, a lot of players are going to opt to use BT plus characters, but Varn can carry you for quite some time. His damage dealing is is a monstrosity. He's up like he does more damage than Tifa at this point, while still providing utility through his defense debuffs from from his White Whirl and Blind as well, which is a lovely just thing to tack onto the end of his kit. And basically, when I say he's user friendly, all you do is press buttons and he wins. <laughs> Um, the only tip I would suggest is wait until he has done the little bit of wind up he does need to do because he needs to use his skills once in order to actually get the follow ups and then he needs to use them again in order to get the plus versions of them which is when you start hitting the crazy numbers. I mean he's still going to hit like a bus getting to that point but he's got to get to that point first so I would suggest waiting to use his LD until you've got those plus versions so that you're getting the most out of those free skill uses. And because of the Omni in peril, like, even enemies that resist him don't resist him. It's only enemies that absorb him out or absorb his elements outright that you have to be concerned about. And therefore, that means that Varn isn't going to be usable in everything. But he's usable in a lot. Um, my only criticisms for him are the fact that he does require that little bit of wind up before he gets going, and his EX is still terrible. Like the only reason you're realistically going to use his uh, like his EX. In fact, I can't really think of any reason that you'd use his EX. It doesn't even grant him any buffs that the rest of his kit wouldn't. It's just like his EX is definitely in need of an overhaul, and hopefully he gets that soon over in JP because the rest of his kit is fantastic. And Arden and Kefka. They're not busted. They're not. Like, they're, they're good, but they're not busted. Arden, certainly, like, I mean, he has his niche in his free turns and his undying mechanic. You know, he's he's still decent, and now because he's got his follow-ups and everything, he, like, he does get a decent amount of damage out, but when you compare him to characters I've mentioned earlier, it's not quite up to par, and because he doesn't really have any utility beyond his undying mechanic, you would normally opt for a better damage dealer at this point. Kefka, on the other hand, does have a lot of benefits in that he has his HP silence and he has, like, obviously the debuffs and he'll pair up well with certain other characters, but he also doesn't pair up with a lot of characters because of how many slots on the debuffs he takes up. But eight debuff slots definitely did him a lot of favours. His HP silence is still really good and now he has the Dancing Mad buff, his HP damage will increase exponentially. But I think that, realistically, it comes down to if you have Varn, you could safely skip this. If you don't have Varn, then I would be very, very inclined to say that it was a banner worth pulling on. Certainly if you're missing at least one of the other two. Uh, you know, we have got other characters coming up in the near future, like whenever Setsa decides to show up. Um, Yuna, Agrius, and then not long after that you have the likes of Zidane and Sid Reigns coming. And that's a thing, you know, you know, BT Plus is very rapidly approaching, so take those opportunities to save while you can. Because while we don't know Varn or Kefka's BT Pluses, we do know Arden's, and it's not great, comparatively to other characters. So his future, not as bright as the other two's, possibly. So there's a lot to look forward to using this banner, but I definitely think that Varn should be the focal point of this particular banner for you, if there is one at all. But the value's still there too, because it's still a triple BT banner. And of course, lastly, the last thing we have to talk about here is Would You Pull, which is a section of the video where you, the viewer, get your chance to make your voice heard and let everyone know whether you would or wouldn't pull on any given banner and why. So once again, a massive thank you goes out to all of my patrons for casting their comments and their votes. And of course, if you would like the full database of everybody's comments, then perhaps you'd like to consider joining up on Patreon and joining the Discord as well, because we have everything there and it's something that a lot of my patrons find very, very valuable, but I obviously can't feature every comment that I get on the videos. So going into numbers, I think that this is going to be reflective of the fact that a lot of these characters are older and therefore it's going to sort of sway people a certain type of way or if they're saving for something else in particular. So 22% of people said yes they were going to use gems here, 19% of people said yes they were going to use 100 or more tickets, 14% of people said they were going to use less than 100 tickets and 44% of people said no. Now I'm actually not surprised by this because a lot of people pulled for Varn in particular when he came out because he was one of the earlier BT characters and he had some decent characters along with him, including the likes of Gabranth when he first came around. So he was quite exciting for a lot of veteran players back then being one of the first. 
But I do think that if you already have Varn, then this banner is a lot less appealing. But if you don't have him, you also don't have to have him either. Now, going into some of these comments, Mark says, I'm really debating here, as I have two of the three BTs featured, Kefka and Ardin, but Varn's rework is way too powerful to just skip the banner. So I might throw some tickets and maybe go for a couple of gem pools, hoping to be graced by the rate ups. So, I... I think it's a, it's a really unfortunate position to be in where Varn's the only thing that you want from the banner because I do think that there are a lot of other characters that are coming up that you might want to consider saving for instead. But Varn's rework really is very powerful and his burst it benefits him a great deal. So personally, like my plan was I was always going to BT token Varn. I did it early. I just hope I don't get a dupe on that on the banner. That will really upset me. Um, but, you know, I was always planning on getting it, and I already had his LD, but I didn't want to go too ham on it at the time. And I think that I actually don't have Ardin. Like, Ardin's the only BT I don't have here, so I don't feel that he's worth going in for alone. But I can totally see where the debate comes from here. Let me know in the comments below what you would do, or if, you, if this is the position you're in, and Varn is the only character that you would want from this. Are you still going to go in, or would you rather save for newer characters instead? J-Dog says, this is another gem banner for me. I don't have anything for these characters, so the value is too good to pass up. Vayne is the main prize here. DPS level is that of Tifa, except he has a ridiculous BT. I can imagine pairing him with the likes of Setzer or Kate Sith. That will just make him even more ridiculous. Didn't mention Kate Sith. Very good idea with, with, with Varn. Um, just clear the boss rush without these characters, but Varn seems like he'd slot himself nicely into as my DPS for future Lufenias. Just give him the right support and watch enemies HP melt. As somebody like who is like who has less, like if you don't have anything on these banners, it's a dead sir. Like triple BT, triple LD, all of which are new, all of which are good, or at least very good, if not ridiculous in the case of Varn, you're gonna get a lot of value out of this. So like pairing up with Setsa, like if Setsa comes out at the same time as this banner, which is something I haven't spoken about, if they come out simultaneously, which there's every chance that there is, would I prioritize Varn or Setsa? My honest question is, I don't know. Probably Setsa. If he's on an LD banner with no BT on it, it's really tough because obviously for both of those banners, it's kind of shady that there's no B if there's no BT on Setsa's banner because then if Tidus BT were on it, I would just say go Setsa, like straight up. But if there's no BT on that banner and then Varn is stood there as well, that throws things into question. Like I actually genuinely don't know the answer to that. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Nick says, this is a tough call for me. I have Kefka's full kit, but not Varn or Ardin. I've heard good things about each, especially Varn with numerous very brave hits and multiple HP dumps, but I need to save my gems for Setsa and Yuna. On the other hand, I was fortunate to get all I needed in the boss rush banner with a small number of tickets, so I have a lot left over. I might throw 200 tickets to this and see what I get. I mean, worst comes to worst. Even if Varn is the only character that you're after, and you get dupes of the other two, that's still dupes you can put towards another banner later, and the rate ups are still there, but I do think throwing resources at a single burst is a recipe for disaster. Like, it's it can, it can go horribly south horribly quickly. And then finally, Nalthian says, the only thing I'm missing from this banner is Varn BT. I was really hoping not to need to use tokens for Tidus so that I could get used tokens for Varn instead as he gets his massive upgrade. But after getting all of the accompanying LD weapons for Tidus with very little investment, it doesn't look like I'm going to get that BT without tokens. I may throw some yellow tickets at this banner and hope for the BT to appear because Varn looks that strong with his rework. But I can't justify gems to chase a single BT and a ton of power stones. I mean, you want to talk power stones? Like, I'm sitting on nearly 600 of the things. I know these feels big time. So, yeah, I, I, this was literally what I was saying earlier. I think that... I think it all depends on what Setsa's banner looks like. And, like, whether he turns up on Yuna's batch, whether he has no BT on the banner. It's so hard to call without knowing all of the information that's available to us. But I definitely think that Setsa should take priority. I think. I think, I think. I don't definitely. I think, I think Setsa should take priority. Because triple BT, it all depends on the individual's position. As somebody who's only missing Ardin, obviously I don't, I'm not going to be pulling on this banner. So I know what I'm doing, but I'm curious to see what everybody else is doing. So that's a big thank you to everyone who's casted their comments on Would You Pull. A massive thank you once again to my patrons. Is it, I'm really hoping that after this we start seeing some clarity on what's coming up in the future. Like, isn't that what these community streams are meant to be for? 
So that's all for today's video. Thank you all very much for joining me today. Let me know whether you're pulling on Varn, on Ardin, on Kefka, on multiple of them, on none of them. What you think of the, the, the lack of transparency when it comes to these upcoming banners that we don't know whether we're coming or going with them. And like, I'll be honest, like I said, I am a little disappointed at this point that we've had no clarity when it comes to these things. Like, I'm all for a surprise, but this is looking like a negative surprise in multiple ways, and we've just had an event where we didn't have the featured character for it, which was very odd. So I'm very curious to see what's going to come out of the community stream on Monday and whether these things get addressed, because there has been a lot of backlash from the community about it. I am of the opinion that I will pull for sets regardless of what happens, but equally, I would have liked to have known in advance what I'm able to do. At the same time, it just seems a little shady at this point. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And obviously, tune in on Monday where I will be streaming whatever comes out of the Equinox banners. I really hope it's this one because it would be really embarrassing if it's not. And then the community stream straight after it. And I'll look forward to seeing you all there. So thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications of any future videos I might be making. And I will see you next time. Take care, everyone.